Joseph Lindsley is in Lviv today. Uh, Joseph, hello to you. And uh, we're getting word here that uh, President Zelensky is saying that uh, there are dangerous provocations now at the Russian-held uh, Zaporizhia nuclear plant. Uh, I guess in his video address he gave uh, last night, he said that uh, invading forces are plotting dangerous provocations involving the facility. What, what are you hearing there? Well, Bob, good afternoon. Actually, I'm in Kiev today. I took the train overnight uh, to the capital. And uh, just a quick note on yesterday, you know, the 4th of July, uh, people were happy to uh, to commemorate that day here, uh, you know, to honor the, the great support uh, of Americans. And so I was on a, uh, a rooftop uh, terrace of an apartment owned by an American volunteer, uh, actually from Chicago. And there were uh, a group of uh, Brits and Americans and Ukrainians and Estonians uh, gathered to honor the day. And so it was nice to have that touch of home. And, uh, you know, Lviv is a, it's a very different city from Kiev. It's like a giant park, uh, cobbled streets. Uh, Kiev is a you know, major city, the seventh biggest city in Europe. Uh, majestic boulevards, fast moving. Uh, so that's where I am today. And as I speak right now, uh, there are strategic Russian bombers maneuvering uh, far away over the Caspian Sea. Uh, uh, each one can shoot six to 12 cruise missiles. Uh, and we have... Uh, some some channels are saying that there is a likely launch of these missiles, uh, but earlier today there was a simulated launch, uh, which the Russians do to try to confuse uh, Ukraine. Uh, so we're kind of waiting now. There's no air alarm here in Kiev. Uh, there is in the eastern part of the country. Uh, and uh, but as we look at this, the, the the nuclear question at the Zaporizhia power plant, uh, you know that's far to the south of here. And uh, I think one of the most telling images there. A uh, reporter from The Guardian in the U.K., Luke Harding, he reported uh, what President Zelensky said, that there are uh, reports that uh, there are devices, uh, explosive devices on top of the reactors. Uh, but as the, uh, the, the the Guardian reporter was there, he's actually down there in Zaporizhia. He's standing on the Ukrainian-controlled uh, shore. And, you can you know, that's about five miles from the nuclear reactors. I've been on that very shore. I've reported to you live uh, from that place. And... It's very telling because what used to be a reservoir is is mudflats. I mean, it was, it was almost like an inland sea, uh, and and it's 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 totally it, it looks like a desert, uh, and that's a reminder of what the Russians did uh, downriver, you know, just a few weeks ago when they blew up the Novokakovka Dam, and you know that water is supposed is is meant uh, the reason part of the reason why there was a reservoir there was to help uh, with the cooling of the nuclear reactors, and so we can already see. Just looking at that image, how the Russians have been very reckless uh, and how the next, you know, they they keep trying to scare everyone. And the next uh, the next thing seems to be this nuclear power plant. And it's very important. I think this has got a little bit missed in the headlines and stories today. But President Zelensky very clearly said that he's, he didn't say that the Russians are going to blow up the plant uh, yet. Uh, he said that they, they've set it up so it would look like Ukrainians were firing from Ukrainian controlled side of that former reservoir toward the nuclear plant, which is, you know, if, because if, if that happened, if Russia could blame Ukraine for trying to attack the plant, uh, then they could use that as a pretext to do something worse. Hmm. And so it's thought that th- this is the strategy of Russia. Uh, you know, there's a few things to consider. The, the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is not Chernobyl. Uh, you know, the, the Ukrainian engineers and engineers from all over the world learned the lessons of Chernobyl. And so Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is very protected. Uh, the, the reactors are, uh, you have multiple uh, encasings and, and it would be very difficult, it seems, uh, to, to call, I mean, some scientists say that, you know, it would be, it would be very difficult to make a major disaster there. Uh, we don't know for sure, but I think it's, we have to just reemphasize that it, what Ukraine is saying is that not that, not that Russia is going to blow this up right now, but they're going to start by making it look like Ukraine is acting recklessly. I was surprised to uh, see the story today, Joseph, uh, I guess out of the Kremlin, uh, claiming that air defenses uh, foiled Kiev's attack on Moscow. Five Ukrainian drones allegedly uh, targeted the Russian capital. Is, is, this, is this an accurate report? Do you think that really happened? I'd be surprised if it, if it did. They're, they're not attacking uh, Moscow, are they? Yeah, well, as always, you know, it's, it's extremely difficult to know, you know, any information that comes out of Russia. 
Uh, any drones that Ukraine did try to send there, you know, I mean, they have to travel quite a distance, uh, pretty deep. I mean, you know, considering the size of Russia, not that deep into Russia, but uh, these drones would have to go pretty far. And, uh, and and what does Ukraine gain from that? You know, I mean, are they just poking Moscow? Uh, it's hard to know. I mean, it's possible. You know, there have been, um, as we've heard, you know, in the past months, uh, soldiers on the ground, whether Ukrainians or Russian fighters siding with Ukraine and Polish fighters making incursions into Russia uh, near the border. Uh, and but but really, there have been hard. And I think it's people might forget this, but Ukraine has barely attacked anything on Russian soil. There have been a few, and actually, Ukraine has never claimed uh, uh, that it has attacked anything on Russian soil. But you know, Russian air bases uh, never get attacked. They only attack. Uh, and if you look at um, so, so it, it, it's it's hard to know as always. You know, but what would Ukraine stand to gain from this? Hmm. And that's why when we look again at the nuclear plants question, uh, you know, some people still question what you know who blew up the nova kakovka dam but just look at how that has strained you know right when ukraine was beginning the counteroffensive, that catastrophe strained ukraine's resources significantly i mean you know as i said you know, everyone i know had to react in some way to help people who were suffering as a result of that uh and 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 so you know why would ukraine want to inflict such damage on its society when right now they need everything they can muster uh, to stand up to the Russians. Uh, furthermore, the you know Russian because Russia has not been attacked, uh, its air defense systems, you know, are are you could say healthy. Uh, and so it's strange that these drones would be able to get that close to Moscow. It just it just doesn't seem like it doesn't make sense to me. I marvel at how you travel around the country. There is it still relatively easy for you to go as you just did from uh, Lviv to Kiev. Yeah, I mean, you know, everyone is so polite. The train staff are wonderful. Uh, you know, I, you, you, you get your own room on the train. It's very nice sleep because you can't, you don't have cell service, so you don't know if there's any alarms. Hmm. You can kind of forget about everything for a while. Uh, and they serve you a nice, you know, coffee and tea. And, uh, you know, the, my train was, it was very unusual today. It was two minutes late. Uh, that never happens. Hmm. Uh, you can, they're always on time, uh, even in the war. And, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, some people uh, in, in some Ukrainian media are, are warning people, don't get complacent because, you know, when everything works, you know, so nicely, uh, you can get your craft coffee in Kiev or Kharkiv, but they're saying, you know, don't get complacent because, you know, this is still very hellish and difficult. Um, and I, I wanted to share with you uh, some words from uh, Ukrainian friends, uh, a team that we work with to, to help get supplies to soldiers. Uh, yesterday, they said, happy Independence Day. May your day be as bright as the stars and stripes and as joyous as the Ukrainian spirit. Mm. Uh, and that's sort of in keeping with all the messages I, I heard yesterday. Uh, and, and Bob, last thing, you know, Saturday will be 500 days of this um, full scale invasion. And uh, so we will we welcome if you go to uh, Ukrainian Freedom News dot com, uh, we welcome any support to help us uh, keep going uh, in this. And uh, and I also I spoke on a, a very popular uh, 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 podcast run by a British military historian, uh, Battleground Ukraine, and you can find that at ukrainianfreedomnews.com. I'm sure our listeners will uh, go there, ukrainianfreedomnews.com. Joe, I'm glad you uh, got to have a bit of a holiday uh, atmosphere, and uh, we'll talk tomorrow. Be well. I had a burger and a beer, so yeah, until tomorrow, Bob. <laughs> that, that a boy. <laughs> okay, take care. Thanks. Thank you for introducing Ukraine on your social media pages. That's very important that much more people can get more information about the situation here and how everybody can help Ukraine to stay stronger and to save all the world. Thank <laughs> you.